So is my screen up? It is. Everyone hear me okay? Yes, sir. Very okay, cool. Okay, so uh, good morning. Uh, thanks again, um, Mark, for the for the introduction, and um, and to Daria who asked me to speak because clearly she wasn't there last year. Or she wouldn't have extended the invitation when I spoke. Um, so last year I spoke about um, the the changing demographics of what a veteran is and uh, and, and how, how that. Well, typically, or at least you know, in times past, we thought of of Remembrance Day as you know. You know, a bunch of old codgers who served in one of the the world first World War One or World War Two or perhaps the Korean War, um, and how that space is changing now, where we have people who can legitimately call themselves veterans uh, who are in anywhere from their twenties. Um, I also spoke briefly on uh, PTSD and some of the complications of that. Um, so, if you missed last year's presentation, I, I'm not repeating any of it. You'll have to wait for my memoirs to come out and read all about it. Um, you're not coming out anything soon. And so what I want to talk about today is I, I will, well, when I was asked to do something, I, I, I wanted to think about something a little bit different, maybe a little thought provoking um, without really advocating too much or advocating a little bit, but simply asking the question is, remember to stay still relevant in, in 2020. Uh, you know, you can see surveys in that that will say that it's still very popular um, among Canadians. Um, I, I don't know, and the, the, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm asking us like from with an open mind, having been to Remembrance Day services basically every day, because it's Remembrance Day is a work day when I was in uniform. Uh, crowds tend to get smaller over the years and um, it, it's, it's kind of understandable as weather gets colder and that. Um, but this year there'll be, you know, for the most part, no ceremonies at all or, or virtual ceremonies, or ones that are that are very limited. So I just wanted to ask, sort of explore the question, is, is this still a relevant day of observation? Um, so a couple things. Um, look at my notes here. So what I'm gonna do is, is look at how Remembrance Day is celebrated in, in other parts of the world, uh, talk a bit about what's happening in Canada, uh, and then maybe take some questions from there. I've got 10 slides, we'll go through them. So hopefully this will play. You can't hear anything. Craig, there's no audio. At least I can't hear anything. Okay. Um, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Apparently that sound didn't come through on that. Um, crank the audio up a bit. But it's, I'm not sure I'll be able to change that, to be honest. Um, it's probably a bandwidth issue, Craig. Okay. Maybe I'm, send it to Mark, maybe. Um, are you on, Mark? I am, yeah. You want me to try sending you this presentation or? And then just going through the slides or what? But why don't you continue with the slides and I'll see if I can source that video. Okay. You can just show the video. Okay. Um, it's because I have one, I have a little bit longer one at the end. It's it's on the Veterans Affairs Canada site. Okay. Um Okay. So anyways, I appreciate the sound quality wasn't good there. Uh, but what, there were some common themes they asked, you know, what the question, what does remembrance mean? And, and some of the answers were recognize those who served, honor sacrifice, reflect on those who made the ultimate sacrifice, uh, duty to commemorate. So those are some of the common themes. So 
really all A plus answers by um, um, my school kids, and I'm not denigrating what they've said. Uh, you know, it's, it's heartening to hear that. Um, I guess the question is, are, are our Canadians doing that? So I'm going to just go to the next slide. I don't want that. some reason I'm having trouble advancing my slides. Here we go. Um, so what this slide basically is, is it looks at Canada and the wars that we've been in the last five major conflicts. Uh, and, and then just bring up sort of the, dating back to about 1900-ish um, when Canada was involved with about a company plus's worth of people, or look wrong, um, several thousand worth of people in the Boer War, going through the world wars up into the Afghanistan conflict. Uh, so if you look across the column, the years sort of chrono chronologically as they occurred, the conflict, the number of casualties. The last column I put there is, is the Indian population. Uh, and I did that to basically observe some trends. Um, so obviously we lost most of, uh, most of our casualties at war during the First and Second World War. But the point I wanted to draw from that was that was it at the time when Canada had a relatively small population. So 61,000 people, um, you know, so service members lost their lives in that conflict out of 8 million. That works out to about 76 per 10,000 over a five and a half year period. Now you, you move forward to, um, to the Afghanistan conflict uh, where we lost 158 soldiers. I'm not counting um, uh, members, uh, like members of the media and other civilians that, that died there. That would take it up to about 165 or so. But it's 158 at a time when our population averaged about 33 million. So what that means is over a 14 year period, we lost five people per per 1 million. Um, so what's the, what's the, oh, and the other point, uh, the 635 is in, is highlighted because those were actual um, uh, casualties from, 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 uh, from, you know, combat in action. It doesn't, it doesn't talk about um, uh, like mental health casualties or, or other people who were um, hurt in say a track or something like that. Hey. So this is just a quick snapshot of how Remembrance Day is, around, is, is observed around the world. Remembrance Day or something similar to it. Uh, in, in the States, uh, they, they call it Veterans Day on November 11th, uh, but really they're, uh, the day they really um, remember their, their day of remembrance really is Memorial Day. Um, uh, the last Monday in May. The UK is, it, 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 Remembrance Day is, is still observed. Uh, it's, it's actually celebrated on the nearest Sunday. So, um, so next Sunday, two days from now, was when Remembrance Day would typically be uh, observed in the UK. France and Belgium, um, similar to us, and then you see uh, what the different countries across the board they're not all November 11th. Some of them are significant for days of, um, for days that are significant within that country. Uh, for example, Italy, that was the day that um, they, they, achieved, they achieved victory in, in one of their previous years. Um, South Korea, Memorial Day was the start of the uh, June, uh, essentially the start of the Korean War. I'm going to take this to the next slide, and this may uh, make Maddie smile. So, this is just one example of of uh, of, of remembrance across the world. Uh, it's the Menengate Memorial to the Missing uh, in Ypres, in Belgium. I was fortunate enough to to be able to visit there in 2017 when I was in Belgium on a work trip. Um,
So what can I tell you about this? Inside, you, you can kind of see if you if you look at the, um, the second picture with the bugler, you can see um, inscriptions on the, on the, the walls of, of that monument. On it, there's nearly 55, the names of 55,000 uh, soldiers, uh, mostly British and Commonwealth soldiers, uh, who were there never buried or their remains were never found. The significance of this is that in Ypres, Belgium, they conduct a last post ceremony um, every night at eight o'clock, and they've been doing it since November 11th, 1929, with the exception of about a four year period. Um, and typically it draws a fairly good crowd, both of locals and of, and of tourists. Um, having been there, I can tell you it's an incredibly moving ceremony, but not just that the fact that it's that, it's that well attended every day, but the fact that they've been doing it continuously with the exception of a four year period um, for, for, almost, for 90 years. So, um, Really a tremendously moving ceremony. Um, should you ever get the chance to travel again, or, or should you ever uh, visit Belgium, highly encourage visiting it. Stay around till eight o'clock. It's, um, it's a deeply moving ceremony. Um, of note, I, I didn't include the picture. For those of you that are um, Facebook friends of mine, you have seen it when I posted it may have seen it when I posted. I spoke to one of the buglers um, uh, and it, he, he, he had done roughly 10,000 such ceremonies. He had done them fairly continuously since, uh, since sometimes uh, in, the, in the 1970s. Uh, and, and he was not much older than me. He was older by about five or 10 years. But, um, again, just sort of gives you an example of ways of um, remembrances of your So why am I bringing this all up? Um, I, I, I've shown some casualty figures. I've talked about how other countries observe remembrance. Uh, and you might be asking yourself, why? Has Malin had one too many meals out of aluminum pots? What's, is there a point he's gonna get to? So I'm, I'm not trying to advocate that, that Canada should have something like nightly service or that we should, um, we should have additional days of, of, of remembrance to, to dedicate it. Um, Really, the, the countries such as the Netherlands and the Belgian, they, they, they express their observation like that because war was obviously personal for them. I mean, World War One, World War Two, World War One, uh, in this, what this memorial was based on, happened there. I mean, if you ever travel in Belgium, as you, you can't help but notice dozens and dozens of cemeteries. And again, I've had a chance to visit uh, several of them, both in the Netherlands and in, or in, in Belgium and France, very somber and um, very somber. Um, in Canada, war wasn't fought here. Uh, our military is vastly smaller than the armies, such as some of the allies I've shown: um, the United States, France, the UK, and, and most Canadians, frankly, have no connection to the military. I mean, the statistics I showed were roughly five people out of a million died over um, over a you know 14 day period. The truth of the matter is, we have a very small military. Most Canadians have no connection to it. Uh, those that had you know relatives that served in the World Wars, um, they're they're becoming fewer and fewer every year. So, sorry, and my slides are jumping around a bit. So, what I really wanted to sort of emphasize here is by remembering the service and sacrifice of military, we recognize the tradition of freedom that these men and women fought to preserve. They believe that their actions in the present would make a significant difference for the future. But it's up to us to ensure that their dream of peace is realized. On Remembrance Day, we acknowledge the courage and sacrifice of those who serve their country and acknowledge our responsibility to work for the peace they fought to achieve.
I want to talk briefly about um, um, the Canada Remembers program. So the Canada Remembers program endeavors to keep alive the achievements and sacrifices of, by those who served Canada in times of war, armed conflict and peace, and to promote an understanding of the significance of these efforts in Canadian life as we know it today. As most people in Canada have never experienced war, remembrance becomes a challenging concept to incorporate. I.e., how do you remember something you've never known? Some have been fortunate to have had relatives, grandparents, etc., who have shared their stories of war and peace. And some of our newer Canadians have come to Canada from perhaps a war-torn motherland. We've all studied Canadian history in high schools, but the vast majority of us, especially the youth, have no first-hand or second-hand knowledge of war, and thankfully so. We can come to understand and appreciate what those who have served Canada in times of war, armed conflict and peace, what they have sacrificed for their country. We live in a great country full of opportunity, freedoms that we often take for granted. We can be sure Canadian veterans don't take our situation for granted. Young men and women sacrificed all they knew, all the comforts, love, safety of home in order to defend the rights, freedoms of others. And some return with physical and emotional scars bound to, bound to haunt them through their lives and some others never return. Veterans know the price paid for the freedom they want. In fact, more than ever, they are passing the torch of remembrance to all of us, the people of Canada, to ensure the memory of their efforts and sacrifice will not die with them and an appreciation of the values they fought that will live on for Canadians. How are we doing for time here? So how do we remember? Uh, so a couple of obvious ones here. I'll start with a poppy, kind of the obvious one, and how it started. So following the First World War, a French woman, Madame Guerin, suggested to a British field marshal, Earl Haig, that women and children in devastated areas of France could produce poppies for sale to support wounded veterans. At first, these poppies were distributed in Canada in 1921. So it's been going on for almost, the tradition's been going on for almost 100 years. And poppies are still worn today as a symbol of remembrance, a reminder of the blood red flower that still grows in the battlefields of France and Belgium. And of course, the, the terrible bloodshed that was commemorated in the poem of uh, Canadian Lieutenant Colonel John McCrae in Flanders Fields. So typically at Remembrance Day services, there is a period of reflection of two minutes of silence. Two minutes of silence provides another significant way of remembering wartime. It's scarcely enough time really for, to think of for thought and reflection, but it's a time that we bow our heads and remember brave men and women who courageously volunteered for the cause of freedom and peace. Again, there's no Remembrance Service um, locally this year and at many and at many places across the country. However, the cenotaphs are there all the time, and I would encourage you to visit them and, and, and see what, and, and read some of the inscriptions on there. For those of you that are fortunate to travel abroad, uh, particularly Europe, there's a number of, of uh, national monuments in Vimy, uh, in Normandy, um, in Belgium, or some of the, you know, among those that I have visited. But you don't have to go as far to do that. If you if you ever go to Ottawa, check out the uh, the National War Memorial there. Um, really, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Really, quite something to, to see. If you've never, never been there before. And finally, I'll give a plug to the Royal Canadian Legion. And I'm not uh, I'm not a member of the Legion, and I haven't always been their biggest fan. But they do. They really have come a long way in supporting veterans, and uh, and the causes needed. So. Uh, typically, again, there will come a time again when we have Remembrance Day. Uh, go into the Legion, support them, talk to a veteran, share a beer, et cetera. Okay, my last slide is a video, which you may or may not be able to hear. Um, 
it, it's one veteran story. Uh, the person in the video is Major Jay Faco, who served with the 3rd Battalion Royal Canadian Regiment. Um, he's going to speak specifically, in, in, he served in Kanda, wrong, in the bowl, uh, talking about uh, an instance when they, he was hit by a suicide bar, bomber on uh, the 27th of January, 2004. So uh, a little more a little more than 16 we years ago. And um, do you have it, Mark? Yes, I do. Actually, okay, perfect. So uh, the significance of this, uh, and he just, um, this incident happened nine days before he was scheduled to come home. So um, I'll stop talking and let Mark play the video. from coming home so we're at the end of the tour um and we were driving to our last mayor meeting uh within that district that we were patrolling we were about nine days from coming home so we're at the end of the tour um and we were driving to our last mayor meeting uh within that district that we were patrolling uh and we were going down uh it was green, called green route right it was about a, a few kilometers from the camp or where we where we stayed um, and we slowed down to take this bump where a bus stop was. There was a, a big bump in, in the road and a suicide bomber came out uh, uh, of the crowd. We didn't know, he just had his hands in his pocket um, and detonated about four feet from the right side of my, 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 my Jeep, uh, instantly killing my signaler, uh, Corporal Jamie Murphy, who is in the back seat uh, on rear security. Uh, and wounding the three other people that were in, in the vehicle. But as I said before, we, we travel on two. So my, 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 my boss at the time, my officer commanding was in the first vehicle uh, and they stopped and we, we took care of the situation at that time. Um, but I sustained wounds to uh, the right side of my body. Uh, very fortunate I wasn't sitting a centimeter to the right or I wouldn't be doing this interview here to, today. Um, and I lost vision in my right eye and uh, shrapnel wounds through my neck, my shoulder, um, my leg, my knee, and then my lower leg um, were, the, were the major ones. And uh, so, but I, I remained conscious through, through the event um, and uh, we'll be instantly trying to secure the, secure the area and then medevac everybody out uh, back to the camp. Um, from there, I was, I was flown by helicopter to the next uh, rural hospital, which was north in Kabul, in, in the city where they kind of looked at me and, and decided what they want to do. And when they decided they need to stabilize the shrapnel that was in my eye and make sure I didn't have any brain uh, damage, they flew me to uh, Germany, to Bonn University, where I went. I went under underwent uh, many surgeries because I had different I had head trauma I had eye I had shrapnel all through my body so I went to many uh, surgeries there uh, and they flew my parents over which was really nice so I could be reunited my, with my family but I never when I was in Germany I never slept a, a wink uh, they didn't the hospital I was in it was a uni Bonn University which is I guess one of the best in the world for what what they needed to do and. Uh, uh, so, but they didn't believe in private rooms. So I was in a room with head trauma, other head trauma patients. And so it was loud, like it was loud. There was, um, I didn't sleep much, but when they flew me home, uh, when I got into Ottawa and they rolled in the TV and put on a hockey game for me, I was, I had a good night's sleep that, that night, but I went through more operations in Ottawa and they were ongoing for the next few years, um, back in Canada. Thanks, Mark. My last uh, my last slide is basically a question slide with a picture of the um, the memorial at Kandahar Airfield. So I'm not going to bother sharing that. Uh, before I take questions, I just want to say I'm not the only person on the chat today that's been to Afghanistan. Ed Hunt was there five years before I was on what was um, really a far more dangerous tour. Uh, I was fortunate. We had um, 1,700 people on my mission. We lost nobody. We had um, one Canadian died in in Kabul on the, um, the, the training mission 
further to the north uh, during during my tour, but we, none of, no one in our task force died. We had one member um, injured by rocket attack, uh, had sustained some um, shrapnel wounds, um, but, but all in all, very fortunate. So, anyways, that's that's all um, all I had to really talk about. I'm happy to take questions. First of all, thank you very much for your presentation, Craig. Thank you for taking the time and sharing with us. Thank you for your service. And Ed, thank you for your service. Uh, questions for Craig? Jerry. Hi there. Um, not so much a question, just a comment um, regard. I think Ian made a comment on the chat line that his daughter was um, uncomfortable wearing her poppy to school because all the poppies were handed out, I, I think, but uh, there was very few of the children that uh, wore them. So I just wanted to bring up the program. If, if you guys are familiar, I think it started a few years ago. Um, no stone left alone and um, that's where the uh, schools get their kids to go to all the cemeteries into the military area and place a poppy on each of the stones so last year in 2019 12,297 students from 127 schools placed 64,503 poppies in 121 ce uh, cemeteries so I, I hope this uh, program uh, gets bigger. It's, it's very uplifting that um, our younger children, and these are elementary kids, our younger children are, are learning about our history there. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Hey, Mark. Ash. Yes. Uh, I'd like to start out by thanking Craig and Ed for the sacrifices that they made and all the veterans, the war one, two, Korean war, Afghanistan war, because of their commitment and their sacrifices allows us today to enjoy this great life. And we should always remember that and appreciate what they have done for us. Thanks Ash. Thank you for that Ash. Alan? Showing that uh, picture of the Menon uh, Gate. Uh, I, I was there uh, at eight o'clock at night uh, and read the names of the Canadian soldiers who, uh, whose bodies were never found. And, and uh, it was a, just a, a really moving ev event. The other thing that uh, most Canadians don't know is that if you visit the Peace Tower in the Memorial Chamber in Ottawa at 11 o'clock every morning, they uh, open the cabinets of the remembrance books and turn one page. And that's a, a quiet ceremony, uh, but it's very moving. So if you, next time you go to Ottawa, I would uh, recommend going to the Memorial Chamber uh, and, uh, and attend that uh, small ceremony. Uh, it, uh, it just makes you feel proud and humble to be a Canadian. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Craig? Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to <clears throat> No, I had two uncles that were in World War II, and um, they didn't see any action. One was a sawyer, and, and he was working in building bridges and that. The other one worked in stores and supplies, uh, providing uh, supplies and materials, etc., for the for the troops in that. So both of them came out. Um, you know, they were not damaged psychologically or physically in that. And for that, of course, our family was really appreciative. And th Craig, thanks for your talk. Thanks, Charlie. Um, you know, I'll, I'll say this: it's not everyone. There, there's no not every 
all, all service is honorable. Um, like I said, I was in Afghanistan in 2011 when we, when we closed the mission. Um, the vast majority of people on my tour did not leave the confines of, of Kandahar Airfield. Um, I went out outside the wire twice uh, because my guys were outside the wire. And it, it, it's a leadership thing. It's, it's what you do. Um, so I went out with them, but I went out twice in, in, five, in a five and a half month period. So, and, and when we were out, well, there was some risk, there was very small. I, my, my point is it, it doesn't matter if, whether you were a, a frontline soldier, someone who worked in the back, a medic, someone who supported the war. It, it's all part of the war effort and it was all part of that. So certainly I'm grateful to, uh, to your uncles for their service as well. I, I should also, I should also say that my uncle brought home a prize of war. He married a woman that he met in England. <laughs> nice. I think Gary has a comment. Jackie. Jackie. Yeah. Um, Craig, oh, Craig, just a question. Um, um, when you were over there, the female soldiers. How many female soldiers? Do you think saw action? Or were they treated the same as as the men? Um, to try and give a percentage, Jerry, would be difficult. Understood. Um, my background is logistics, so um, there are women. I won't say creeping, but starting to come into the combat arms. Um, not so much the infantry, but more so the armor corps, the artillery, uh, and the engineers, particularly the the armor and the and the artillery, um, but there's a lot of, but there's a lot of females in the logistics trades. So that's transport, supply, finance. Um, so within my unit, I had a, I had 133 soldiers in my unit. Um, it wasn't a third, but it was probably closer to a, a fourth, to a fifth. So out of 125, probably 40 um, w women. And and the second part of your question, women aren't treated any different there. Uh, they're all part of the team. There are female <clears throat> casualties. There's medics that went out on combat logistics patrols uh, that were killed. Um, Nicola Goddard, um, fairly well known. She was on Ed's tour, I believe, an artillery officer, uh, a forward observation officer. So she'd be the one that would call down artillery fire. Uh, and and the, the, the group she was with, um, I think it was an IED that, um, that her, her or observation team. Yeah. So my experience there, uh, my experience in the military, women are treated the same, particularly on an operation like that. Thank you. Jackie, did you have a question? Yeah. Yes, I just wanted to thank you for your presentation and, and thank you for your service and Ed, and Ed you as well. Um, I do have a, a nephew who is in um, Edmonton here at the Edmonton Garrison. He's done two tours uh, he just, he was gone from January through June in Jordan uh, this past year during COVID, um, helping the Jordanians um, with their logistical efforts. And um, while it was a peaceful tour, there was never a time that we back at home, and especially his wife and two small children, who, you know, was without him for six months, uh, wasn't thinking about him. And so I think we also have to remember those who are waiting in the wings, who are part of the team. Thank I know you. Matt. I know Matt um, worked with him the last couple of years um, before I went to the UK and then after I got back. So yeah, Matt's a good guy and that was, um, no, it was a good tour to go on. Unfortunately, his experience wasn't as good because of uh, of COVID. Because uh, I, uh, a soldier I worked with was basically his right hand man. Um, he worked in, was previously in my office before I retired. So yeah. Yeah, it wasn't an ideal uh, deployment, but uh, and he probably should have just been home and probably could have been more useful at home. But I don't know. Um, I guess my point is 
soldiers do what they have to do and they and they go out and they do it and no questions asked and families are are affected by that and and are alone so i think you know it's uh it affects everybody but we're so proud it's you know Ma, carol and i have had this discussion of who had it harder uh, i maintain that that she had it harder because when, when you're when you're overseas or you're on tour you, you literally have one job. You get up, you do your job. And for the most part, you do it six and a half days a week. Sunday is generally short. Right? Um, but while I'm there, that's that's all you have to, I mean, your meals are provided for you. Um, I mean, there's you know, mess all your laundry. Uh, there's enough activity to keep you busy, like, um, like physical activity, like there's gymnasiums. I don't have to worry about sick kids, about paying bills. Um, about any of that, you just get up and do your job. Um, no, you're, yeah, th th it's definitely, it's, it's hard being away from your family for an extended period of time, but it, it's wh whether you're here or you're there and your family's here, it's, it's a little different, so um, but yeah, it's part of service. Thank you. Other questions for Craig? Yeah, Mark, I'm just wondering, Myron here, um, just wondering, um, Ed, I should know this, but what was your background in the military? If you don't mind sharing that with the group, please. I was a uh, logistics finance uh, for most of my career. Okay. And how many different countries were you in? Uh, just, well, three, if you include the States, but uh, Bosnia with Craig and uh, Afghanistan, not with Craig, but I was there... Uh, um, in 2006. Right. All right. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Craig. And um, I have to say, um, I, I'm so pleased to be a part of this club and um, to hear the comments and the sharing and the perspectives. Um, uh, you can just feel it <laughs> coming off the screen this morning. So uh, thank you very much for that. And um, just so that you know, um, we do have a, a wreath that will be placed at the Cenotaph after the ceremony. So um, if you're in the area, you can uh, have a look for that. Reports and announcements. Um, we had our board meeting just uh, earlier on this week, lots of great conversations. Um, progress was made. We reviewed the um, membership survey, uh, which I shared out and hopefully everybody eventually found where that was. Um, we uh, have set up a committee for uh, selection of the president elect nominee for 22-23. And that will be happening in uh, the next few weeks. And then that will be announced um, at the AGM, which is December the 11th. Um, I'm also pleased to announce that um, we've made some progress in fundraising and events. As you know, it's um, quite a, a massive portfolio and Isabel was definitely feeling it. Um, so what we did was um, Isabel is still going to be leading fundraising and events but um, she's gonna be taking the lead specifically on the 50-50 initiative that is underway right now and should be launching pretty quickly. Uh, Laszlo, John and Don are continuing with the flag program and we're very pleased that they are doing that. Very successful program. Um, Kim uh, Baguera has uh, agreed to take the lead for the gala, um, whichever uh, version that will be going forward, um, assuming virtual, so thank you so much for uh, taking that on, uh, Kim. And um, the uh, Rib Fest is going to be led by Adrian. So um, we've now split those uh, larger projects into four. And um, so I thank uh, the individuals who have agreed to step up for uh, taking the leads on those. Uh, the Rotaract Club of St. Albert's had their first meeting yesterday. 
Laura, I don't know if you want to comment on that. Yeah, uh, I was going to bring it up in happy bucks. So I'll leave, I'll do that then too. But we had our first meeting yesterday. Uh, four of our members, uh, including myself, were there. Uh, two couldn't make it, which is totally okay. Um, but it was really, really good. I was expecting just kind of stunned silence from it, but we already have two events kind of outlined for what we're doing after one meeting. What? <laughs> um, so I'm really, really excited. Um, everyone seems really involved and the event idea is phenomenal, frankly. I'm in love with this. So uh, be on the lookout for that later. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Laura. Well done. Uh, our AGM is on uh, December the 11th, so there'll be more details coming out about that. Uh, Christmas party is on the 17th, and um, I believe Matt will be sending out some more details on that. I don't know if Matt's on the call this morning. I don't think I saw him. Uh, youth exchange. Um, Jerry, do you want to just speak to this, please? Sure. Um... I sent out the group email yesterday uh, as I got it from uh, our district office from Karen Munjak, who's our youth chair committee or youth committee chair. And uh, this is an understatement, but it's very disappointing that our youth exchange program, probably across the board, has been canceled for 2021-22. So after Rebecca got all her paperwork in for the second year it's been cancelled so i'm it's devastating for her um but as you can understand it's a myriad of, of reasons that the uh, the consulates and embassies are not uh, granting any visas um, flights are unpredictable COVID is getting worse uh, schools are not accepting inbounds so for all those reasons and probably more um, unfortunately, our, our program has been canceled yet again. Uh, yes, very sad news um, and has ripples across uh, so many, so many folks, our club, and it's, um, it's definitely will be felt uh, for years. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Uh, Salvation Army Kettles, I think. Mr. Campbell would like to say a few words, and he is out in the field. There he is. Out in the field. So, yes, I um, want to talk about a couple of items. The first would be uh, Salvation Army Kettles. As you know, in the past, the club has uh, selected like two days and then the kettles. And we're being asked by the Salvation Army if we'd like to do that again. It's their intent to have kettles set up at a number of the, of the large locations. Uh, this is really letting the club members know that we will be sending out a, um, a request to get an intent whether or not uh, Rotarians in themselves have any interest uh, given, the, given COVID times, whether or not they would like to man a kettle. So that's the first part we'll be asking about that. The second is, is that a club tradition has been uh, for Christmas is that we, um, did a kettle uh, and as you recall we passed the kettle around we'd fill it and we timed our kettle with the uh, uh, bank uh, scotia banks uh, matching so that all the money that we collected that day uh, actually went uh, to uh, scotia bank and and they matched it so if we had uh, two thousand dollars in the pot literally we were raising four thousand dollars so we're going to talk about how we can have um, for that day a, a virtual kettle maybe uh, for Rotary. So we'll be working on that. And the last item is uh, uh, the board discussed and, and, and it was around uh, honoring and uh, doing something in memory of Flora Fitness. Uh, Flora was a big supporter, I think, uh, those of us who knew her quite well, of the uh, National uh, Lemonade Day Stand. Uh, and her, uh, she was extremely proud that her grandchildren uh, participated in that. So we'll be coming back to club members uh, to talk about uh, doing something whereby we would hope 
that we would collect some funds, maybe get that into their hands of her grandchildren, and then the grandchildren can make the contribution to the stallery because the Lemonade Day, uh, National Day thing is a, uh, is a stallery campaign. So please watch your e email. Uh, we'll be out to, to consult on that. And just a reminder that uh, next Thursday is a regular meeting of the Community Services Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate those updates. Uh, any other announcements? And this doesn't include you, James. Um, I have a special slide for you. Anything else here? Anyone wants to share announcements wise? Uh, hearing none, our next meeting is November the 13th and Karen Link, who's the executive director for Volunteer Alberta will be presenting guest speaker. Uh, other clubs, you probably saw this, uh, Saint City has their wine survival raffle, survivor raffle in support of their projects. Um, and I think, I think it was you that said it, Lori, you get, uh, the winner gets a uh, hundred bottles of wine. Is that right? I think so. If I yeah. remember the ad right. It's a lot. It's a lot of wine. <laughs> whole, by, whole bunch of wine. <laughs> so, <thank you. laughs> so, James, um, I uh, will uh, pass this over to you. I think you have a couple of uh, presentations to make this morning. Thank you, President Mark. Um, just a big shout out to everyone. <clears throat> I miss all you guys, my brothers and sisters in Rotary. It's, uh, I look forward to the day where we can uh, share some love together and uh, share our spirits in person. Uh, I see you guys out there in the restaurant. Uh, that's awesome. I'll be there as well. And um, just let's keep going. Let's keep remembering the great work as Rotarians that we do as a club and that we do internationally as an organization of Rotarians. Um, Let's just keep this power going and the service above self and all that we do and all that we believe in. And we're going through some hard times and, and let's just keep supporting each other and doing a wonderful job of serving the world, serving our community. And by staying strong and many hands make light work. And so let's keep doing our share, asking what we can do for our club, for the world, service above self. Again, Rotary is huge and what we're doing is huge. There's 35,000 clubs around the world and 1.2 million Rotarians, and we're part of that bigger picture. And it gives me great pleasure today to welcome two, uh, two new people to the Paul Harris Fellowship. Charlene Zoltenko and Ash Connor. you guys out there? Give me a shout. I'm waiting for you. Unmute yourself. Charlene, can you say hi? Hello. Hey, nice to see you. Thank you. Ash, are you there, my friend? Yes, James, I'm here. Thank you. All right. Good, good. Okay, Charlene, pretend you're coming up to stage up front and center right now. Charlene, you're coming up with me and uh, we have some pins and we have a certificate for you. And President Mark is standing behind me and um, in becoming a Paul Harris Fellow, Charlene Zoltenko joins a remarkable company of persons throughout the world. They are recognized for their devotion to the ideal of goodwill, peace and understanding a goal of Rotarians the world over and one that Charlene clearly shares. Charlene, it gives me great pleasure to present you with the emblem of appreciation given to Paul Harris Fellow, a certificate and a pin. We congratulate you and we thank you for the, your commitment to the programs of the Rotary Foundation. Paul Harris said, he who tries to find the good in others will be rewarded for others will surely find the good in him. Of all the earth's sad and lonesome creatures, the most helpless is he who loves not his fellow men. Please ri rise, everybody, or just clap and join me in recognizing our new Paul Harris fellow, Charlene. Everyone's clapping. Mark now is giving a pin and a certificate. Charlene. Thank you, Charlene. Yay. <laughs> and, and sorry to interrupt, right. James. I think it's actually... Uh, Paul Harris Fellow plus one. So this is the Charlene. Oh, Fellow. is it? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So it's uh, uh, the second round. Uh, so right. just for those of you who don't know, Paul Harris uh, goes in, in levels. So the first uh, one is the 1,000 donation to the foundation. And and then each one is plus one, two, three. So sorry, Charlene, actually, plus actually, one. My first Paul Harris came from Maddie. Oh, uh, 
Okay. Maddie uh, presented Laura and I with um, Paul Harris's um, okay. when she was here as an exchange student. So that's where Laura and I got our first Paul Harris from. Okay, great. Good, good. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Ash Khan, if you could come up front and center, picture him coming up. We're all standing up there and President Mark is behind me with uh, the pin. Yay. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Today, we have the privilege of recognizing Ash Khan for his wonderful support of the Rotary Foundation. Ash, your contributions to the Rotary Foundation of Rotary International are allying suffering, improving living conditions, and providing edu educational opportunities for young people somewhere in the world. Your gifts are truly selfless actions and demonstrate your commitment to our common goals of world understanding and peace. Therefore, on behalf of the President of Rotary International and the Chairman of the Trustee of the Rotary Foundation, it gives me great pleasure to pre present you a multiple Paul Harris Fellow lapel pin level eight major donor in appreciation of your generous contribution to the annual funds of the Rotary and on their behalf to extend our sincere thanks. So thank you, Ash, and please receive your pin. Thank you. Thank you, President Mark, for the opportunity to share the wonderful works of the Foundation and Paul Harris Fellow. Um, everyone, I hope, seen the, uh, the notice for nominees for our new uh, election of the Paul Harris Community Fellowship Award. So if you find, feel someone that's a, a, good, a good candidate for that, please submit a, a written uh, response to me and we'll present it to the board and, and, and award that. Uh, so remember if it, we'll have that twice a year. So thank you everybody. Thank you, James. Congratulations, Charlene and Ash. Thank you so much for your support of the foundation. And uh, here's a new feature for our presentations. There's some content coming out from the district. This one is on uh, memorial and tribute gifts. Uh, if you wish to honor or memorialize someone, you can go to rotary.org forward slash donate and choose, I would like to make this donation in honor of or in memory of someone. And then uh, they will get the family of or the individual, depending on the situation, will be notified of the contribution. So there you go. Thank you. So, sorry, Mark, I just, yay. Uh, hold on before that, one more little shout out for uh, foundation. I remember I have a few goals and I do one big goal is I'd like to get a banner for every Rotarian every year. And that means I would like everybody, you know, if uh, wherever they're at is a minimum of $25 to give uh, to the foundation. So we have uh, society members that give a thousand. We have people that give a hundred and all over the map, but I'd love to see all Rotarians give a minimum of $25. That would be awesome. Thank you. Thanks, James. Uh, can I do this now? Birthdays and anniversaries. <laughs> I'm giving you a rough time. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, very short list this week. Um, spouse birthdays. Tammy Mockford's birthday, wife of Scott, is uh, her birthday's on November 8th. So happy birthday to Tammy. And um, this one's not really a, a member birthday, but Frank Prosperi Porta just became a new grandpa. So if you're talking to him, Wish him all the best. Such great news. He's so excited. And I get to do that again. There we go. And now I'm going to hand it off to jean carl and Marquis. Ooh. Marcus. Oh, Marcus. You're Marcus. I'm Marcus. That's good. That's to my full name. There you go. <laughs> um, all right. So... Chase the Ace? Might as well start with Chase the Ace. It's what everyone's here for, right? Oh, I thought everyone's here to see you. No. Oh, I'm here to see you. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. COVID. Sorry. Yeah. Five bucks. Um, okay. So, on that happy note, who do we... Oh, Natalia, yeah. Can you unmute yourself? We, we, we got you here, my dear. So, we're changing it up a little bit this week because numbers 1 through 20, they've been banned. So I moved it to 20 to 40. So pick a number between 20 and 40. Oh, 
Thirty-four. Thirty-four. That is. Oh, you know, no, can't. I can't do it. It's, it's Kathy. Okay, Kathy. Kathy. Yay! <laughs> Fixed. Yeah, I told you. I, I don't know. <laughs> you should do this because people would. Right, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why they would trust me anyway. Yeah. But... Hand sanitizer. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Myron. Queen. Yeah, you are she a queen, is a queen, but you're still a loser. <laughs> still, <laughs> she's a queen, but a loser. All, All right. right. Thirty-four is seventeen times two. <laughs> Natalia, you love your seventeens twice as much now. Um, Kathy, you're not a loser. Gonna pick the A's. Still a loser. Um. All right. So. What do we do? Uh, let's start with happy bucks. Yeah, I was just gonna say happy yeah. happy bucks. Happy bucks. Who's so happy, happy today? I'm happy. Okay, Laz, why are you happy? Let me guess. You want to make money? Oh my! My wife got the a text last night that she's negative for COVID, so we're Ooh, good here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Not pregnant and not COVID. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I know it's hard to do this when you have a peanut gallery yeah, here behind you. It's just and we can't hear what they're saying. Uh, yeah, be thankful for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, who else I, had, I had an encounter with COVID this week, and it really surprised me how um, much of an impact personally it can have. It's a pretty <clears throat> powerful bug, and um, my happy bucks are because everybody else outside of the two people involved tested negative, so we're. We're a okay. Uh, and Jackie Hansen just expressed something we all feel. She's happy the U.S. election is almost over, so we can get back to being obsessive about COVID. So yeah, it's been a nice distraction, but uh, it's time for the season finale of American Politics to finally end. Yeah, but I do hear there's a new show called American Civil War that's about to start. <laughs> yes, so, oh, that'll be worth watching. It's been trending on Facebook. Uh, I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, who else do we have for happy bucks? Happy Bucks. I mentioned it earlier. I'm just really, really happy with how the first Road Act Club meeting went. Um, I'm really, really pumped about it, and everyone seems really excited and enthused. So that's my happy buck. Yeah, Very good. Yeah, awesome. Well, I have some to throw in myself. Um, as Jerry mentioned, they announced yesterday that the youth exchange is over, uh, won't be happening next year, and that means that Rebecca's chance to Go on, the exchange is completely gone because the following year she'll be aged out and going to university. So, obviously, sad bucks for me on that one, but I gotta say, I, I have some happy bucks uh, because we got the news yesterday morning at about 11. Uh, and at six o'clock, when I was driving her to her karate class, she was already talking about how she was gonna get over to Europe through either another exchange program on her own, backpacking despite the fact that Rotary isn't able to send her and I completely understand why they can't, uh, she's going anyway and she'll find her way. So I'm really encouraged from that to her. It hasn't destroyed her completely. Uh, I was really scared of how she was going to take it, but uh, I'm very proud of, of how stoic she's been through this and, and how determined she is. So I'll throw a few bucks in there Great. as well. Perfect. Um, anyone else? Who do we have? I have a happy buck. Who's that? That's, it's Kim Bagara here. I have a happy book um, that I forgot to give last week. I'm happy that um, my daughter is taking driver's cha training with a Rotarian. So thanks um, to Mr. Salan for teaching my daughter how to drive uh, along with any other Rotarians who've gone before us. So there may be safe kids on the road. <laughs> That's awesome. I thought Joe's driver's license was taken away. Apparently <laughs> not. <laughs> Yeah, it probably was, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's taught everybody in this town how to drive. Like, yeah. Um, okay. Any other happy bus? We're, we're in a good roll this morning. You may not have to find anyone. Keep it coming. I've got happy bucks. Uh, um, my grandson turns 15 years old tomorrow, and we're having having uh, dinner, I guess, at uh, his house. So. I'm very happy. That's my oldest grandkid that's at home now. That's awesome. Good. Yeah, fantastic. 
Any other? Before we start finding? Like yeah, John. John, yes. it's Myron. Yeah, I've got five bucks. Uh, it's kind of uh, mixed emotions. It's a year ago since uh, the colorful Don Cherry lost his job with CBC. So I guess it's kind of in remembrance of him. Uh, he's a very colorful guy and uh, in the NHL world, hockey world, he did quite a bit. Uh, well, you know, he's a little bit of an outspokesman, but uh, to Don Cherry. Fair enough. Good stuff. All right. <laughs> and with that, I think we're done with the happy box. There we go. Perfect. And we've got like 10 minutes worth of finding we can do. 10? Well, perfect. Let's go. Okay. Well, should we start with the screenshot? Yeah, let's do a screenshot. Okay. Right? So, <clears throat> do you want to explain this first one? Uh, where did we get this one? Let's see what I mean. So, this. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's right here. Oh, it's like, can they see it? Did you guys see that? <laughs> <laughs> so this is our weekly old Canada crotch shot. Uh, Alan Murdoch, thank you very much. Um, looks yeah. great. Looks great. You, yeah. Yeah, you look wonderful. Does Doug Campbell have no friends there? Why is he all alone? <laughs> <laughs> and then that's uh, yeah. Doug Campbell's tracking to be Santa. <laughs> yeah, so th this is... Uh, this is uh, fireside chat with Uncle Doug. <laughs> <laughs> with all his friends. Yeah. <laughs> his friends, exactly. Great story. Yeah. And then you guys saw Doug, that. it's not you, it's us, buddy. <laughs> no, it's you. So Doug, five bucks to you. Alan, five bucks to you. Yeah. I'm sorry, hold on. The people here. Just... So this fireside oh. chat with Uncle Doug. Um and then I only have one find to hand out. Um, and I'm going to call this the um, Anita Ratsinski find. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Anita, this is in your honor. Um, as Doug was giving his presentation, another uh, St. Albert mayor, in addition to yourself, was sitting in the back going, turn it up, we can't hear you. <laughs> so um, Kathy, that'll be five bucks for you for the Anita Ratsinski find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have any points? Oh, sorry. Do you have any? Uh, so just the election was on this week. So I just want to see how many people stayed up past, or how many people watched the election. Just raise your hand, wave. Yeah, good. Come on, screen. No, James, you didn't watch. Okay. Liar. How many? Yeah, liar. Is it the truth? Is it fair <laughs> it's the truth. truth? It is the truth. Come on. Okay, so how many people stayed up past 10 o'clock? I know that's bedtime for a lot. How many are going to stay up to <laughs> Yeah. And then who stayed up to like 12 just to like see if it was actually going to happen? Yeah. And then who's still watching it right now today? I checked it between the table and here. <laughs> yeah. I, you're, all, <laughs> you're all fine. <laughs> all right, thank you. Yeah. I mean, it's entertaining. Slowly. It's, yeah. It's a slow burn. It's a slow burn. And it burns. <laughs> and it burns. Let's be yeah. honest. It burns. Um, okay. Anything else? No, I'm good. Do we have fines from the floor? Jerry, I see you waving. Hi, Jerry. Hi. So whoever is not wearing their poppy today should be fined a couple of bucks. That's a fantastic fun, right. Jerry. Right. Yeah. Mine's on my jacket. <laughs> it is. President Mark should be fined for gloating and smiling just because you have your bloody poppy on. You're yeah, exactly. A dollar for gloating. <laughs> All right. I have uh, do we have any fines from the floor other than James's? I do. Jerry. Yeah, Jerry's. What I, do we got? I have one for John, actually. <laughs> okay. I have a, a fine for you for taking screenshots during O Canada. Oh, yeah. He did apologize. I did apologize. Uh, yeah, <laughs> apologize with five bucks, my friend. <laughs> I'll pay it. Yeah, I'll pay it. Anyone else? Yeah, fine from the floor for uh, the Hudson's Bay ad that is the two of you today. It's the <laughs> two for one. I'm glad you said it. I was thinking that. I'm like, honestly, this looks like a commercial in the background oh, for sure. Saying, Absolutely. Saying, bay yeah, days. The bay would be very <laughs> Get that. Someone take that picture. Yeah, five bucks for that sweater. I'm a little projectile. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry, run, run down, go online, get your, it's, it's a sale days at the Bay. 
<laughs> it's really not a bad look. It's good. It's just it could be an ad. So probably. It, it is an ad. It is an ad. This is recorded, and we'll send it to the bay to go live. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll take it. Yeah, that's, fun. Yeah. that's a good one. I like that. That's good. Well so we'll end on that. Yeah. <laughs> Any other finds from the floor that are not for me? Because I think I've gotten every single one so far. Nice. Good. Okay, fine. If you have more finds for me, go ahead. <laughs> We're out. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that. Entertaining as always. And Natalia, thank you for your contributions. We are on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and these meetings are posted on our YouTube channel. Thank you to all of our contributors this morning. Uh, Craig for an amazing presentation, Andre Charlois for the inspirational moment, our sergeants at arms, Natalia, and our guests, both of them, Maddie and Natalia, gets a second shout out. And remember, if you need support, please reach out to your fellow club members, Ling King, who's our caring coordinator, or go online for resources. And it was, I was reminded of this yesterday, it's okay not to be okay. But before we hit our four-way test, I just want to say, amazing club, we had 39 participates in our meeting this morning, including the restaurant. So uh, best attendance in a while, and I'm gonna chalk it up to uh, uh, everybody knowing that Craig was gonna be making his presentation this morning. So thanks for coming out. I really appreciate the tone. And let's end with the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Do, is it the truth? Is it the truth? <laughs> the truth. Is it yeah. fair to all concerned? concerned? Will it build and better friendships? Better friendships? Will it be will beneficial, it be beneficial to all concerned? All concerned. And, will and will it be fun? Will it be fun? Nice. Bye, everyone. Happy Bye, everyone. Weekend. Maddie, are you there? Maddie, are you still there? Yes. Hey, I was wanted to hear from you on exchange. It's kind of, we missed that energy of the youth. Tell me a little bit about what's happening out in your end of the world. Um, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to? What are you up to personally? What's happening in your um, life? I'm still studying. I have like, I had a week of holiday. So I was like studying the whole week. I went biking with my dad this morning because he had a COVID test. So we were bike there. Um, and then uh the hospital my dad hospital they're like gonna be covid again but they are still gonna ha like have the people there and covid so they're gonna like separate both of the thing because it's kind of getting really bad in belgium and france and luxembourg too so they're like smart in luxembourg and making more places but yeah i'm just really tired because of like the school, but I'm so glad I changed my mind and went to nursing school. I love it. I'm just so happy with it. It's hard, oh, but awesome. I'm really, really happy with it. <laughs> that's great, Maddie. But yeah. Good. Yeah, that's awesome, Maddie. Maddie's Thanks parents were in um, France and had to come home because of the lockdown, right, Maddie? Oh, they're, they meant to like go only for a week, but yeah, like, they came back because it didn't make sense. They could only go like a kilometer around the condo and there was nothing around. So <laughs> even the bakery isn't in the one kilometer so on. So it didn't work. Hmm. But and yeah, did you so you back to work? Uh, yes. So he was like two weeks holiday uh, and he's going back on Monday. And now he's getting tested for COVID every week. Oh my goodness. And my brother is getting tested every two weeks because of his job. And I'm what never getting, like I only got tested twice. I'm glad because it hurts so bad in the nose. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, my dad did it. Like when you go at the testing place where my dad is going, they do it in the throat. But when my, my dad did both of my tests and oh, I wasn't ready. I thought he was going to do it in the throat and then he went for my nose 
and he like finished the first side and then he was like wait i'm not done i'm like what he just <laughs> <laughs> what does your brother do, Maddie? Uh, he's a teacher, like a music teacher. Okay. So he sees oh, okay. a lot of people, and because he teach in Belgium and Luxembourg, Luxembourg, like they do a lot, a lot of testing in Luxembourg. That's great. Um, so yeah, because Belgium, they're just so like behind everything. It's crazy. I so wanted to, on a positive note, I know you're a skier. I am going skiing next Thursday in Jasper. It's opening up already. I'm going to be the first person on the hill, on the lift on Thursday. So I wanted to gloat. How's the skiing? What's happening on the Alps? Um, I'm supposed to be going, um, wait, which holiday? Like after Christmas and like in March, I'm supposed to be going. So I don't know if, like, I really hope so. My dad think we are going to be able to go, but, like, my dad and my brother were supposed to go for, like, Christmas in January. And we don't think it's going to be open, but I hope it's going to be open in March. I really want to go. Because I, ugh. and there is no snow. I I just miss the snow so much because I only have it when I go skiing. Because it's- You don't have uh, snow yet either, so quiet, Maddie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, you do not like us, though. I do. I miss the snow. Hey, we're, I think we're I remember you complaining how cold and snowy it was every time when it was cold and snowy. Now you like it, now you don't like it. No, I, I love when it's cold and snowy, like, but I don't okay. like that in Belgium because it's just like how, like, you know how the snow, when the snow is melting in March, it's just always like that in Belgium. It's like, it's snow like two centimeters and then it's like water and mushy and just gross. But then in Canada, it's like all white and cold. And... But no. oh, we can't wait till you can come back here, Maddie. Me too. I'm well, just like, maybe we're I... saying Rebecca can visit Maddie. I hope There so. you go. <laughs> if, if the borders open then up. Then she can come to Belgium. <laughs> but yeah. Nice. That's like, I don't have a lot of issue with COVID. I don't mind staying home. I don't mind not partying and all of that. I just... Actually, I, I like it, like, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, oh. the only thing that I'm really pissed about is that I couldn't come this summer. Yes. I miss the food, like, I'm just dreaming about the popcorn <laughs> and the drinks and the, oh. Tim Hortons. And we'd like to come to Belgium to have food, so there's a, there's a whole other. <laughs> yeah. Your food exchange. And I'm like, every time I go to like, the shop i hope i don't know why i'm like maybe it happened it's here it's not never like we have canada dry but we don't have the cranberry one and that's the big oh. thing in the room <laughs> and then we don't have like the smart popcorn the cheddar the white cheddar we don't have it and the what it. white cheddar white cheddar popcorn yeah. oh white cheddar popcorn oh. <laughs> I love it because no she way. Is it, and now <laughs> I just Laura. always want to eat it. <laughs> Laura gets fine for gloating because it looks like she has the white cheddar right in right there. Eat one in front of her right now. That's awesome. It's too early for white cheddar popcorn, but I do have oh, okay. <laughs> can, can you just send your package with it? I really should sure. just like Screen mail sure. you popcorn. Because I looked online and it's like 80 bucks if I want to have one package because I have to pay like I don't know how much to send it. I feel like we can mail it to somebody. I bet there's a powder that you could get, like the actual yeah, there's white a, cheddar. It's there is a steak. Good, it's not as good. I like oh, I God. tried it when I was in Canada because I was like, oh, maybe I can just buy that. No. <laughs> when no, I came not. back, I came back with like two like package of it. I still have maple syrup, so that's oh that's good. A win. I, but the I can't find the popcorn in the drinks. <laughs> Maybe James has some kind of shipping uh, abilities from his restaurant to send you some yeah. cranberry ginger ale and a whole yeah, box of better uh, popcorn. You know, if you put your list out to Santa, put it out there into the universe and you just never know what happens. So I hear cranberry, uh, Canada dry and cheddar popcorn. You just got to ask. And a pony. And, and a, a pony. pony. <laughs> 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 All 
Byron, my friend, how is your how's your recovery? How's your hips? Are you sprinting up mountains now? And how's your how's things for you? Well, you haven't heard. I'm going to be the second skier right behind you. And <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> things are going downhill. Good. Yeah. No, they're going okay. Thank good. you. I got a little golfing in this summer, so that felt good. And Stacy, oh. um, bye, Maddie. How is uh, Nova Scotia? Is it you were in Stacy? Yeah, I was in Nova Scotia. It was um, uh, my dad's surgery went well, and he's on the mend. Um, so yeah, it was it was interesting self isolating in an RV, which I haven't done since I was a kid, and there was a ten hour power outage scheduled by Nova Scotia Power on our first night, so we froze our butts off, but uh, made it through self isolation and then got to enjoy uh, a, a day in Halifax and a little bit of time in the valley. So two weeks in an RV isolating is a long time. Yeah, I continued my photo project and took wonderful pictures of the, we had 15 acres to walk around. Um, so we did lots of walking and sunsets, and sunrises, but it was pretty isolated. And then they're doing a lot of contract tracing there in the Atlantic bubble. We got tested, we had phone calls and emails every day from Nova Scotia Health. And then once we were on the loose and through it, they were, uh, most restaurants and pubs were uh, doing contract tracing. So you had to give your name and phone number and yeah. I know um, our chamber chair just came back from the States and I think she said she's been contacted numerous times, provincially and federally, yeah. to make sure where she's supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, it's worrying. I think the numbers went from a thousand here in Alberta to over 5,000 in the four weeks we were gone. So. It was almost, I was almost scared to come back. <laughs> we were yeah, safe no, no. there. Yeah. No, the numbers is like well, yesterday were horrendous, right? So. Yeah. But yeah. I'm grateful to be uh, for the healthcare workers. I think dad interacted with 15 people in, in one day um, for a minor pacemaker surgery. So they, they were all in good spirits and it was well done. So. That's awesome. Yeah. That's going to be the challenge. Thanks for asking. Here. Yeah. Yeah, it's people waiting for surgeries, right? Um, being delayed. Yeah, it had been postponed three times and it was basically on recall and dead battery. So it had to be changed, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and, yeah. and those people can't wait, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, nice to be back. Nice to see everybody. Yeah. And, uh, we'll uh, see you next week. Sounds good. Thank All right, you take care, Maddie. Take good to see everyone. Bye, everyone. 15, hey, James, I think you owe some money. We'll be hearing about that. I, who do I owe money to? I think Laz. It didn't, it, is it over? I, I, I owe Canada yeah, it's over. 100 bucks. It's over. Is it actually officially over? I believe it is. Let me just look at CNN here, but on uh, Global, it looks like I saw it. <laughs> I don't think Trump is going to let it end. And I, I mean, I'll, I'll pay the 100 bucks. I bet them, Maddie, 100 bucks each that Trump would win. So... And I bet my son, Lucas, uh, 20 bucks. And he keeps like, I want my 20 bucks. I said, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's, it's not, sh I saw it on one that it was showing it was over. It's not showing it over on CNN yet. But okay. Georgia, he is leading in Georgia now and in Pennsylvania. J Trump is? No, no, but Biden. Biden. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Is, is now leading in both those states, so. You know, it's good either way. I mean, it doesn't oh. matter either way. I mean, it's like there's good. I mean, both of them are bad. Side. Both of them are bad. <laughs> yeah. So it's pick the worst of the worst, right? So I don't know. Maybe, but I'm just, so, I mean, I look at it for Alberta. What's Alberta's benefit? Yes. And I mean, I, I, if Biden follows through and stops fracking and stops oil, and maybe that'll give oil prices for Alberta a chance, the pipeline could go through. Who knows, right? So there's, there's positives and negatives all along. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just crazy either way. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, we right. find Maddie, it. I might, move to Greece. I might just move to Greece and start a little fishing village. And I'm going to start my special oil. I got lots of olive trees there. I'm going to have a simple life. I'm going to make my kids uh, pick olives. We'll fish and I'll, I'll send oil over back to Canada and uh, to Belgium. Nice. Just come go. to Belgium. We almost never have a government. We finally yeah, had one it. like a week ago. <laughs> yeah. 
Nice seeing everyone. Right. Thank you. Good to see you, Maddie. Take care of yourself right. and uh, keep having some fun. Bye, everyone.